What's going on guys? Today, this is a different kind of conversation. The title of this video is, I Forgot. And one of the things I wanna talk about as we get into it, I'm gonna start off with, I got my last car back today from the rental car business. And, you know, I've expressed how annoying the rental car business was and true to form, you know, he wants to bring it back in the middle of the day. And this is one of the things I forgot. I forgot what it is to be a person without resources. So he brings the car back and, you know, I had to go meet someone who was looking at the buying the car. So I go there and he emails me, he says he's dropping our car off. And like an hour later, I had to go there to meet someone and he is still there in the car. He is still there. And he's like, hey, what's up, you know? And I was like, what's up and everything. First time I ever seen him because he picked it up the car as a remote and he was like talking about, I spent $11,000 for this car. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And one of the things that I did is I looked at the car, the car wasn't damaged and uh, he did bring it back with a full tank of gas. Now we had one issue. Well, we had two issues. Um, there was, he had to buy a tire, this once again, and he had to do an oil change. Now the oil change, as the owner of the car, I'm responsible for the oil change. So I'm supposed to reimburse them. But the tires, man, I, I've gone round and round with these people about these tires. It's like, did you rent the car with a flat tire? No, that meant you ran over something. So I, I didn't pay him for the tire and he got pissed off about that. I did reimburse him for the oil change. And um, one of the things, you know, he, he got really aggressive and he was like, you know, I spent all this money for this car. And you know, if you had communicated, cause you're, you know, like, I'll be straight up. He was 100% correct. My communication sucked because I didn't give a damn. I am like, I'm, once this car comes back, I am out of this business. I don't really care. You know, all of the extreme customer service because here's the thing. I wasn't making money from this. Well, actually, let's say this car was bringing in about 900 bucks a month. Big whoop, right? And, um, one of the things that I've learned, because I'm going to get back into the series of things I forgot, is that trying to sell these cars to the people who rent them was a bad idea. Because they, you know, he kept track of what he had paid, and he actually paid more to rent the car than what I paid for the car. I only paid like 7000 for the car. Now, here's where we, like I said, it was true to form. The car comes back, and the check engine lights on, and the car is is vibrating. When you put it up, it's like boom, 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 which means it needs a tune-up, which is about 700 bucks. Uh, I could spend the money to get the tune-up or I could just sell a car as is. And more than likely what I'm gonna do is just sell the car as is because I still have two cars at the mechanics waiting to get parts. So I'm gonna let someone else deal with that. But he never mentioned that the car was doing that. And the, the, the last, the last, vehicle the last vehicle to come in same problems that started happening and I feel that's the only reason that he brought it back is the car was acting up even though I have all these messages from him about the oil change about the tire nothing about the car needing maintenance nothing and um, one of the things that um, I looked at and I um, came to realize because uh, one of the things that I understood, because it made me think, how many people, because I, I had someone else who was supposed to come look at the car today, and they couldn't get there because they were waiting on the ride. And I was starting to think, how many people, because like, like right now, I have five people that I can call right now because I know their schedules, and if I needed a ride somewhere, they would come get me. Or they would, I, I have people that I can count on. 2019, I had a heart attack. I had someone waiting on me hand and foot in the hospital. So 
This is what I mean, I forgot. I forgot what it is to be a person without resources, without someone to help them out, someone to call on. I've not lived in an environment where I've not had help or assistance whenever I needed it. Going back to the heart attack, I literally had someone waiting on me hand and foot for months, taking care of me in the hospital, taking care of me at home. I don't know what it is to be in a jam and not have someone that's willing to extend the help. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what that feels like. That's not been my reality, but this car rental business has exposed to me. There are so many people who don't have nobody, don't have no one to help them, have no one to provide assistance. They are out here on their own. See, this is what I'm saying. I forgot because they used to be me. I used to be out here on these streets by my damn self. I didn't have no one that I can borrow money from. I didn't have no one that can help me. I didn't have no one to wait on me. Like if I had a heart attack when I was homeless, I would have been screwed. But over the years, I have built relationships, associations where literally, you know, I don't really need something. And th this is one of the things like, whenever one of my friends, like if I need something, they're like, you need something for me? Who is this? My, this is strange. You actually need, they're, they're surprised. Cause I don't really ask for stuff. I really don't ask for stuff. And one of the things that I forgot what, how lonely it is, how desperate it is, how bad it is to be in this world by yourself with no one to help you. You know, uh, there was a YouTuber who made fun of this because I, I, I actually kept a habit of keeping a girlfriend and living with a girl because I didn't want to get to the point where I was unable to live with someone. There are many people who are so self-centered, selfish, they can't live with no one because it's all about them. And I believe this YouTuber, she's in the same boat. I don't think she can live with anyone because it's all about her. And you know, it, it, it gets real interesting how people will look and remark at the things I say, but they don't learn the lesson. One of the reasons that I have associates, friendships, relationships where I can get assistance when I need it um, is because I have been a friend to people before I needed the assistance. And I'm just looking at the number of people who are, who have no one. And I can see if you were born an orphan, you were born and your parents just threw you in the street and you grew up in an orphanage. I can see to a point why you would not have the family. Cause here's the thing. If you didn't know this about me, um, my grandmother, Catherine Cameron, married my grandfather, Sumner Cameron, after he had already had children who were 18, 19, 20, and 25 years old. So my grandfather, who was an older man, married him a yacht, a hot, like, you know, I never really thought about this until I made this video, but my grandmother was a hot number when she was younger because she was, quote, red bone. She had blonde hair. She was high yellow, as they would call her. And I didn't really, you know, cause she was just grandma to me. I never really looked at her that way. But as I'm sitting back here and looking at the dynamics of their relationship, my grandmother was a hot no number when she was young. And my grandfather, even though he had five children by Catherine Cameron, who was his first wife, she died. Um, all of my family situations, except for a few cousins, most of these people have passed on. So I don't have that, like, I, I've got some family members, some cousins that you know, I keep in contact with, but the family assistance, the family tribe ain't what it used to be. Cause they all died. Like, 
One of the things that was so fun for me was my Aunt Inez, who was just, she was so cool. And um, they, used to, they used to call, well, there was two Inez's. I have an Aunt Inez and there was another Inez and her nickname was Sister. Everyone used to call her Sister. And uh, she was so funny. And Sister took a liking to me and Sister was going to um, tell me some things that my mother wouldn't tell me. She said, when you're of age, I'll tell you. But unfortunately, she passed on before she can tell me. So from a family dynamic, I don't really have that type of assistance because most of them are gone. I would say Aunt Bunny just died. She was 107. She just died three years ago. So I would say 90% of the family that I grew up with is gone because they were already like, because I, I know this is a kid that my Aunt Evelyn, my Aunt Lillian, they were, I, I just knew that they were like older. I didn't know how much older. I didn't have the perspective to shape, but they were like 20, 25 years older than my mom. 25 years is a huge age gap, man. It's a huge age gap when you're talking about getting old. And recently, you know, it was back to back. Uh, Aunt Lillian, Aunt Evelyn died. Aunt Evelyn was the oldest. She died many, many years ago. So from a family dynamic, I really don't have that, right? But from a friendship dynamic and associations and relationships that I have built, I do have family in that regard. So I, I have family. And now going back to the October instance when I was on the lead attorney show and they was like, don't you have anyone you run anything by? I thought when I was asked that question, it was a silly question because I'm a grown ass man. I don't have anyone that I run my business decisions by. No one. <laughs> I do have some entrepreneur friends that I'll discuss a few advanced topics because there's an investment that I'm into and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I've talked to three of them because they were in the similar investments and they kind of walked me through what I can expect. I will talk about something that, but the day to day of my YouTube, I don't like, Hey babe, what do you think of this video? Ah, ah, that, that's a silly ass question to me. Cause I'm a grown ass man. I don't run my YouTube topics by anyone. My girlfriend, I don't even ask her. And she's very much into social media and stuff very much into it. And I don't ask her because it's the habit of me and that lone wolf. But as we go through the global reset, as we go through this upcoming recession, I have compassion and empathy for all of these people who don't have nobody. Cause like I said, I forgot. I don't know what it's like to not have, I mean, I've had from my, my beautiful business partner, Francine, I've always had someone in my corner I've always had someone I can depend on, upon. I've always had someone I can trust. I got friends I can trust with money. You know why I can trust them with money? Because they already got money. If I needed to move X amount of dollars somewhere and I was like, hey, I can like, doo -doo, hey, I got this situation where I need to liquidate my accounts where it making me look like I don't have no money. Could you hold on to like four or five mil for me? Sure. And I, I actually, something like that kind of happened. And that's how I know I can trust this friend to hold money because he got money. So I got people that I can trust with money, which is a deep, deep level of trust. I got people like, let me go ahead and tell you, um, those who can't trust can't be trusted. Um, was out to dinner with my girlfriend and she went to the bathroom and she left her phone on the table. It didn't even occur to me to pick up her phone and go through her phone. I don't even like she, 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 when she's out with her phone, her phone is never turned over and stuff like this. And she gets a text and I happen to be there. She'll answer her text. Um, I don't deal with those kind of people who can't trust folks. I don't deal with, um, situation. Like I said, I don't know what it's like to not have anybody for those of you who are in that unfortunate, and I say it's unfortunate because 
the world, I, this is one of the reasons I can be so big and bad and bold because I have people in my personal life that I can depend upon and count upon. And furthermore, I have a whole bunch of folks online who got my back. Uh, at the moment, I, want, I don't think I, I think I said thank you, but I'm going to say it right now for everyone who had my back during the great October incidents. Thank you. I appreciate you. You guys are heroes. You guys are awesome. So I have people who have my back online and offline. And you right now, you got folks out here. You got a single mom with two kids and she don't have nobody she can count on nobody no one it's just her and those two kids and she gonna be sucking a sugar daddy dick tonight because she got to so right now there's a man he's 65 years old never got married never had no children he lives in the house he lives by himself and he's terribly terribly lonely terribly terribly lonely he's got oscar the cat or maybe pb the dog so I don't know what it's like. Like I said, I forgot. There was a period in my time when I was completely and utterly ass out. I remember that, but I don't think about it. It's, it doesn't pop up in my daily memories. Like, I really don't think about being homeless. It, it never really crosses my mind. Like when I do a video and I talk about being homeless, at that moment, I go back in time and I, I realize that, but I don't, I don't think about that because it is in my rear view mirror. But for some people, cause like this guy, I don't know how many people, cause it's like the pull up. If you watch JT pocket watchers, <laughs> EYL pulled up on him in California. It was hilarious. It was hilarious. Uh, I have dealt with these people renting my cars and I've come to understand a lot of these folks don't have nobody. They don't have no one they can count on. They have no one they can borrow money from. They have no one they can trust. They're out here in this big cruel world by their damn self. They're out here. They're out here, man. They're out here. They're out here struggling. They're out here trying to make it do what it do. They're out here on their own. What's that song? What's that singer? On my own. Who sings that song? I forget. It's a black singer. On my own. I want to say Dion Warwick or someone. I, or Patty LaBelle. Patty. Patty. Patty LaBelle. And these people are on their own. They don't have no one they can count on. They have no one to trust. And the number of folks who, you know, cause like I said, from an intellectual standpoint, I knew there were people out here who didn't have anyone, but from a personal experience standpoint, I didn't really know anyone that was in that situation. Cause like I said, I had a heart attack 2019. I had people waiting on me hand and foot. I had people bringing me meals. I had people looking, calling in to check on me. I had people who, I had one friend who I didn't tell because she gets emotional and I, I like, I didn't want to tell her and she got emotional. We went to lunch and when I told her, she said, don't you ever do that again. If you have something happen to you, you let me know. Don't you ever, she got emotional. So I got some really good friends. I got some amazing friends. I got some great friends and um, I don't know what it's like to be out here in this world by myself. I don't, I have no clue to what it, I don't know, but for those of you who are in the unfortunate situation where you don't have no one you can trust or the people in your circle, you got to look at them because they are out to get you. Or they may try to stick you for your paper. Please put that in the comments because I don't know what it's like to be on my own. Now, as a YouTube creator, I consider myself a full-time YouTube creator. Uh, I spend a great deal of time alone, but I'm not lonely. I'm not lonely. And, you know, I see my girlfriend too. 
you know, on a good week, I'll see her like three times a week, but on, you know, the good average week, once or twice a week. And because I'm so busy, it doesn't bother me. And she's busy too. She's really busy. So, um, one of the things that I'm contemplating and I'm looking at, because once again, there's some I'm working on. I'm not going to mention what I'm working on because it's not, it's not ready to, it's not ready for prime time. It's not ready to be mentioned, but man, I, like I said, I forgot. And this dude who returned the car today, cause the, the pressure, cause you know, I'm about to say something that may sound insensitive. It may even sound heartless to some people. I don't worry about bills. I don't worry about the price of gas. I need gas, credit card goes in the machine, I pump my gas, I go about my business. I don't worry about that stuff because of the stuff in the home economics course that I've learned is one of the reasons I don't worry about this stuff. I don't worry about inflation. I don't, I just, I don't worry about that stuff because I have put in the work I have put in the work years ago to be where I'm at today. Let's go ahead and talk about that. The decision that you make today in 2022 is going to have ramifications in 2032. The decisions that you make today have 10 year consequences. So if you make a whole bunch of good decisions today, 10 years down the road, your life is going to be amazing. But if you make a bunch of doo-doo head decisions or you're just tricking off or you're messing around, you might be in the same spot that you're in today, 10 years from now. And that's not a good look. That's not a good look. So once again, um, you know, for the folks who don't have nobody, you have my uh, condolences, you have my infamy, because I don't know what it's like to be alone in this world. And every time, like, I don't think I've ever told this story. 10 years, like 2009. Yeah, it was a 10 year gap. 10 years ago, I got sick. I had chronic fatigue syndrome and some other stuff and I was unable to work. And guess what I had back then? I had my business partner, and then the girl I was dating, she waited on me hand and foot. This girl actually cooked dinner and brought dinner to me in bed. So I don't know what it's like to not have nobody. And once again, salute to all of my online soldiers, to all of the people who are in the Glendon Cameron platoon, who were putting up videos dealing with the dirty, nasty, salties. I had someone put up a video, you know, th this is one of the, these people are so stupid. I got a video on disruptive mail, just talking about how to be a predator, right? Just like none of these clowns have commented on it because maybe they can realize that I was just trolling. I was trolling hard, but they will comment on videos that have nothing to do with it. I don't understand that. If you can understand that and you can hip a brother to it, let me know. But once again, I don't know what it's like to be on my own. I don't know what it's like to be in this world by myself. I don't, I don't, I have no clue to what that feels like on a personal level. I don't know what it's like to be by myself on a professional level. I don't know what it's like to be on by myself on a friendship level. I don't know what it's like to be by myself. I don't. Once again, you know, I feel that I've made some pretty good decisions. I've been a really good friend and going forward, I'm going to have to remember and cherish those friendships and keep them intact because, you know, I don't want to be one of those folks to know what it's like to be on my own. I, ugh, that just sounds terrible. That sounds horrible. That just sounds, mm, sounds messed up. Sounds messed up. So the reason I'm doing this video is we're on, we're in the great, we're in the global reset. And next year we will be in a recession. And these economic forces usually bring bad things to people who like, one of the reasons that I watch soft white underbelly is these people are real. These are real people who are living life. And he 
deals with the bottom 25% of America. And I just look at what would have happened if my mother was the product of a poor family, because believe it or not, my grandfather, he owned a business. My grandmother, she was hot. My mother was the product of an upper middle class black family. This is why reading and education was such a fundamental. My grandmother, my grandmother had her bachelor's degree. Back in the day, that wasn't a normal thing to have a bunch of black folks with degrees. That wasn't normal. So my grandmother was atypical. And I wonder what would have happened to me if I wasn't born in that environment. Because the older I get, the more I realize how important that stuff was. This is why, you know, if I have more children, I'll be married. My kids will grow up in a two parent household. I, it's so important, it's so important. And I wonder what would have happened because there were some kids in the neighborhood, Olivia and Levi Paste, and these were the lost children. Father was a pimp, mother was a prostitute, and dysfunction and bad things just happened to each and every one of them. And that could have been my fate if I didn't roll a cosmic dice and to be born in the situation that I was born in. I am so grateful for my grandmother. I am so grateful for all of the people who looked after me. They contributed to my success. So that's all I got for you guys. I got something else I'm gonna roll out for you really, really soon. We'll let you know. This is Glendon Cameron. Let, you, let me know what you thought of this video in the comment section with the well-constructed comments. Once again, to my nerd tribe, to the nerd gang, to the, I, 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 I don't even know what I'm gonna call you guys, but to my intellectual black folks, I got nothing but love for you folks and I really appreciate you. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. I will see you guys in the next one.